In this week's video, we're going to show you how we upgraded our Raymarine navigation electronics. In last week's video, we routed our NEMA 2000 backbone network cable system all the way from the bow, all the way up into the cockpit helm area. And now we're going to be installing our Triton 2 multifunction display unit. And this one's gonna be responsible for depth, speed, and temperature of the water the boat's in. And we'll show you how it turned out. We like it, it looks pretty good. And it's a strong contrast to the old equipment that's in there. And it's gonna be a nice modern upgrade and we're really happy with the functions and capabilities it's gonna to bring to our navigation system. Stick around, we'll show you how we did it. Okay, so here we are. One of, the, one of our next projects is going to be uh, to install this B&G, a multifunction display. And that's, this one's going to be dedicated to depth, speed, and temperature of the water. Once we have this powered up, it'll kind of give you a better idea of what we're trying to do. But eventually we want to go all B&G electronics. This boat has really outdated electronics anyways. But that also means we're going to be switching over to B&G Autopilot and uh, radar and our chart plotter and everything. Here's our nice multi-function display and it's gonna look something similar to this once it's powered up. Look at we got lots of books and manuals and uh, hopefully there's more pictures than writing. Yeah I'm not I'm not gonna be reading all this but we'll figure it out. All right, so we got this wire ran up through here through the pedestal, which was very difficult. I ended up having to uh, heat this, the other end of this up with a heat gun and put a bend in it just to get it to go through this cutout here. Welcome back to another exciting and thrill-filled adventure with DIY Nautical Dream. Welcome back to another edition of DIY Nautical Dream. I'm Rich, and... Hi guys, welcome back. This is Priscilla again. There's Priscilla. From the Philippines. Still enjoying my vacation here, but um, still want to help husband to give you guys an update to our DIY project. Anyways, what's going on there, honey? What's happening in the other side of the world? Anyways, um, go ahead, honey. Tell us what's going on to our project. So in this week's episode, we are finishing up with the NEMA 2000 backbone system installation. And we have finished running the cable from the steering pedestal, which is up in the cockpit area, down into the engine room, right up in the overhead area of the engine room. And so uh, what we ended up having to do is we ended up having to melt the end of the cable to get it to bend to make the radius, the turn, and all that sort of thing. So uh, it was kind of a little more difficult than we expected, but in the end we prevailed and we were able to get that installed. And as you'll see in the video, it turns out pretty good. Stay tuned and we'll show you what we've done. Okay, so here we are. One of, the, one of our next projects is going to be, we're going to convert our Raymarine electronics over to B&G electronics. And so one of the first things we need to change out on the boat is the multifunction display up top, which was Ray, uh, old outdated Raymarine depth gauge. We're going to put in this new Raymarine uh, multi-function display and that's, this one's going to be dedicated to depth, speed, and temperature of the water that the boat is in. Once we have this powered up it'll kind of give you a better idea of what we're trying to do but eventually we want to go all B&G electronics. I like some of the new features that B&G has. This boat has really outdated electronics anyways so we're going to go B&G. But that also means we're going to be switching over to B&G Autopilot. 
and uh, radar and our chart plotter and everything. So it's going to be a piece at a time because it's going to be really expensive and I, uh, I don't think we want to pay for it all at once. So anyways, here's our nice uh, multi-function display and it's going to look something similar to this once it's powered up. But, you know, look at we got lots of books and manuals and uh, hopefully there's more pictures than writing because yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to be reading all this, but we'll figure it out. But anyways, yeah, so we got some wiring up ahead of us. So we're going to gonna have to plan this, this out because it's not just going to be for this. It's going to be for the, uh, the navigation system and all the other instruments as well. So we'll slowly upgrade to all B&G equipment. Oh, wow. This, uh, yeah. And we'll figure it out. I, the nice thing about this is once everything gets all hooked up, I'm going to have several of these T fittings. I'll have these up in the actual, um, up inside the helm and the up inside the nav pod area. I'll have a couple of these in there. And so really everything should, all the gauges should just tie into this backbone system here. And then we only have to run one wire down from the helm, down through the engine room and tie into the main, the main uh, wire harness. I'm hoping that'll be a lot easier because this is pretty, this is pretty bulky, diameter-wise, to still try and run through a really small uh, tube up into the helm. So that's still going to be tricky because there's other wires in there as well. So we'll figure right. it out. But all right. So what we had to do, we needed some more T fittings. So what we ended up doing was, we now have the NEMA 2000 backbone network cable all the way to here in the engine room and it flows all the way down there you know you saw in the previous video where we snaked it all the way under the floor and all that stuff from about midship aft so now what we need instead of getting a T fitting and putting it in down here what we did is we got another network cable and we a shorter one and we hooked it up up into the nav pod area up, up up in the cockpit and we routed it down but I couldn't get the cable to make the bend through the nav pod frame up at the, the helm frame there the steering helm those stainless tubes I couldn't get it to make the bend so what I ended up having to do was I had to heat this up and put a little bit of a radius a little bend into it so that took a lot, I had to get that heated up. And you can see here where I had the twine on it to pull it through. So I had to put some really small twine on there and pull that down through here into the uh, into the compart engine compartment here. So you see where it's at right there. And we also deleted quite a few more wires. So now we have plenty of room in there for more cables if we ever needed to, but I think we have what we need. Now we have multiple T fittings up in the uh, nav pod, which allows us to expand to multiple more multi-function displays. And so that's exactly what we're looking for. And so for now, we just need to put these two connections together. So stand by and we'll set up for that. All right, so we're gonna route it on the back side of this ventilation duct here, the tube. And then we'll meet these two together right here. And remember, we have to turn them until they clock together. And then right here. And we just want to make it tight, but not super tight. And that's it right there. So now we have these connected. And that will allow all of our data from like the uh, forward transducer that we installed. It will allow that to register up on the multi-function display up in the uh, steering helm pedestal area. We'll just kind of leave this for right now how it is. It's it's fastened with a couple of zip ties. We have a lot more we have a lot more work we're going to be doing. And then we also ran the power cable for the backbone system, the network, ran it into the uh, electrical panel area. And then like I said, we want to expand to more BNG uh, displays for our GPS, navigation, 
autopilot, the wind vane, all that stuff is going to be all BNG, and a lot of that will operate on the NEMA 2000 network. So that'll be really good that we have that in there. It's kind of like the foundation of our electronics. And so we're looking forward to expanding more on that. So don't want to ramble on too much about it, but I'll show you what we got going on here. So that's it. And you can see, you can see here where I had to heat it up a little bit to bend it. And uh, yeah, so we just heated that with a heat gun, just gradually kept warming it a little bit more, a little bit more and trying to put a little bit of a bend into it and just enough that it made it through that radius. I could have went with a smaller cable that had a little bit less heavy duty connections on it, but I wanted to go with something big and heavy duty that hopefully will last the test of time. And then here, this is going to the Ray Marine chart plotter, which eventually we're gonna be uh, deleting all those as well, but for right now, we'll leave it. So that's it, we'll just close up the Close the doors back up here in the engine room. What's that? So here's a sample of a few of the screens we saw when we first initially powered it up. And then uh, we just kind of walked ourselves through it. Like I said earlier in the video, we didn't really read the manual. We're not big on reading those if we don't need to. Um, we just kind of figured it's plug and play and we walked through the instructions on the screen basically figured it out as long as you take your time and you don't try to rush through it it's not too hard to get you know get through it and you won't get lost in the menus and stuff but we're pretty happy with how this is turning out and how it looks so uh, I think this is a good move for us it's gonna modernize our electronics so that's all good so I went ahead and just powered it up real quick just to make sure that the uh, system is is set up properly I went ahead went in through all the uh, menu settings on here and was able to get it to automatically recognize that the transducer uh, is the right one and it's working so that's a good thing so now we're just going to go ahead and continue on with the uh, routing the wires up until the, the bottom of the cockpit and anyway so nice to know that this is this is actually working so we did something right yeah. we're gonna go uh, finish this up and then but yeah it's pretty cool Pretty cool to see that even that works at least. So, all right. So here we are. Finally got the uh, the NEMA 2000 drop cable from the helm down into the engine room. I ended up having to heat this up with a heat gun and put a a bend in it and let it cool in that direction to be able to get it to fit through the cutout right here because the cutout is such a uh, sharp radius to get it to start heading down into the, uh, the helm pedestal steering pedestal so anyways we went ahead and brought this up I hooked up a little mini uh, drop cable to it we have our BNG screen here and we're gonna go ahead and try this out and see see if it works All right, hopefully we have some power. Well, look at there. Anyway, so that's pretty cool. So that means everything works. Let's see what happens after this power is up. Let's see if we can go to the menu. I guess we have to wait. Okay, here we go. So it looks like, looks like it's in night mode. Well, uh, let's see here. A few moments later. Settings system see here display setup let's go to default wow well this is pretty cool i'm gonna have to uh see what i got going on here oh there's night mode okay so we're gonna get it out of night mode how do we get that out so we're out of night mode and now how do we close menu let's go home all right there we go. Still doesn't seem very bright, but okay. So see, it's recognized our our transducer, it, uh, the new transducer we put in. So that's pretty cool. Um, very nice. So that's gonna go up in here. Awesome. 
Anyways, we still have a lot of work to go to do. This is just a temporary setup. We still we still have to put it in here, do some cutouts. We still have to remove. Uh, we're gonna remove the wind the wind gauge because there's nothing up on the mast that's it's gone. The the wind meter, the Windex. Anyways, that's missing. So um, yeah, so this is where we're at. Cool, huh? So here it is, take a look. Looks pretty nice. We'll go into a little bit of details of all the hard work it took to get here, but it was worth it in the end. Well, this is pretty cool. This is a big success here. We got the, uh, finally got the little B&G screen here, multi-function display up, up at the uh, helm station, up in the cockpit. Uh, I had to run this, this really bad, really thick, heavy, uh, backbone cable all the way from the engine room up through the the leg of the pedestal here through that curve through another curve there and then all the way down and at the bottom down here is goes into the uh, engine room and so I had to I had to force this cable which it did not want to go and um I ended up having to heat this other the other end of this and melt a melt a little bit of a bend into it and otherwise it was never going to make this radius this curve right here and uh, that worked so that's pretty cool so now with this setup here we have uh hookups for one two three more three more display units so that'll work perfect for what we're what we're going to do here we, we're going to put in um two more at least so that's gonna work out really nice and uh, we'll have I'll show you I'll show you here in a second what we have going on so here we are we have the screen the multifunction display is gonna sit up in here something like that and then uh, where the center one is that's the autopilot that we currently have right now that's Ray Marine and then um, we'll eventually switch that over to BNG um, the Windex gauge is gonna be next that's the one that's right here um, because the, the actual the sensor which is at the top of the mast is broken and it doesn't send any data down here It just uh, shows zero wind speed all the time. I have the power plug on uh, Disconnected this time. But anyways, that's the next one. We're going to disconnect and then Anyway, so that's pretty cool, but the problem is is the center gauge here. See how much wider it is than the other ones well, that means behind that gauge is uh, a different hole pattern than what's going to be for the uh, the B and G screen. So I'm already working on an idea in order to make that look a little nicer because I don't want to see those holes um, once we have the new screens mounted and stuff. But that's down the road. For now, we're just happy that we got this screen in here. Everything works. It powers up. It recognizes the. Um, the new sensor, the new through hole sensor the, that's up in the bow, at the bottom of the bow. Depth, speed, and temperature. So that's cool, plus angle. And uh, yeah, really nice. All right, here we are. This is kind of give you an idea what it's gonna look like when everything's all turned on, but you can see the screen on the uh, GPS has kind of got some interference with it. It's an old unit. We're definitely gonna replace it. It should work for what we're gonna need it for in the uh, near term. The radar will be replaced, the new Windex uh, wind gauge will be replaced, the autopilot will be replaced. So yeah, anyways, one thing at a time, but this kind of gives you an idea of what the future is going to look like. And we also have this forward-looking sonar, which it actually works. Although the screen is very dim and it's really basically useful only at nighttime, uh, but it still works, so maybe we replace the screen down the road and we just keep it in there as uh, some kind of a backup if we're going through shallow rocky areas or whatever. So after taking all the time to route that NEMA 2000 backbone network cable from the bow all the way back to the uh, engine compartment and up into the cockpit helm area in order to install this B&G Triton 2 multifunction display, we're really happy with the results. It's dramatically changing and updating the look on our navigation helm display area. And so yeah, it's looking pretty nice. It's modernizing it and that's a huge upgrade. So we're really happy with it. 
We're really looking forward to picking up the rest of the components. It'll be over time, but eventually we'll develop this and update the rest of the components as well. And it'll be worth it in the end. We'll have a really nice modern navigation area here in the cockpit. Okay, we're back. And uh, yeah, that wasn't too hard. It wasn't that easy as well, but uh, we had that little obstacle of getting that cable to make the bend radius. Uh, I think heating that up was the best way to go. Otherwise, we would have had to run with a smaller diameter cable, and I really wanted to try to have as much heavy-duty cable as we could get in there, just because I don't want any power loss. Uh, I don't want any signal loss or, any, or anything like that through the length of the cable. So I think that we're good with that. And uh, so that's gonna, now having that whole network cable installed is going to provide us expandability down the road, which is really a nice thing. That's something we were looking forward to. And, uh, you know, later on we'll add GPS and um, radar and all that stuff and it'll all tie in together. And also having that network cable in there is gonna allow us to add uh, fuel and water tank sensors and all kinds of other stuff down the road. So the, the uh, expandability is really nice. And uh, so yeah, we're happy about that. So anyways, that'll wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that install. And uh, remember, it's not a recommendation to how, how you should do it. It's how we did it. So turned out all right. Baby, what do you have to say? How does it go from here? I can't remember. She's the one who always says it. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. If you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe down below. And clean. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below. Thanks for watching. See, See ya. ya. <laughs> we should be back together and back to normal here pretty soon. Thanks for your patience and hope you enjoyed the video. Man, if I only hit record.